My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss the theory and results of McConkie agar. McConkie agar is a medium that is both selective and differential. The McConkie agar contains bile salts and crystal violet that we actually saw uh, when we did gram staining. It turns out that the mixture of bile salts and crystal violet inhibits the growth of gram-positive bacteria. It allows the growth of most gram-negative bacteria. So therefore, we can actually uh, select only gram-negative bacteria for growth because this prevents the growth of gram-positive bacteria. The main thing McConkie agar is able to determine is whether or not lactose, which is a sugar disaccharide, whether or not lactose can be fermented into acid end products such as lactic acid shown here on the bottom of the image. To do this, McConkie agar also contains a pH indicator. And the basis of this is if lactose is able to be fermented into acid end products such as lactic acid, then the pH indicator will actually turn a hot pink. Okay, and we'll actually see that more on the next slide, but here's a taste right here. It turns out on the left of this uh, dish right here, this, this McConkie agar, this over here on the left, this hot pink, on this side of it, only the left, that's where we actually had bacteria, gram-negative bacteria that is, that can ferment lactose into lactate, lactic acid, our acid end products. Just some theory behind this, lactose is a disaccharide. It's actually able to be hydrolyzed into two individual monosaccharides, glucose and galactose by a beta-galactosidase enzyme. It turns out that both galactose and glucose will enter glycolysis, and through this pathway we will actually get pyruvic acid or pyruvate. It turns out that then pyruvate can then be converted into lactic acid by this enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase. And assuming lactic acid and other acid end products are present, the agar will actually turn hot pink. So therefore, I will repeat, McConkie agar determines whether or not gram-negative bacteria, because it selects for those, can ferment lactose into lactic acid. We'll take another look at these results right here. On this image here on the left, we see that actually the right side of this uh, McConkie agar is actually where we had gram-negative bacteria that can ferment lactose into lactic acid. That's indicated by these hot pink regions. Um, in some cases, you'll have some hot pink diffusing away from uh, the actual streak, and in some cases, like here in the middle, you will not. In either case, we see this hot pink color right here, and therefore we know these two regions, the middle and the right side, have gram-negative bacteria that are able to ferment lactose into lactic acid. Okay, Over here, we don't see any red or hot pink, so therefore these back this bacteria over here is not able to ferment lactose into lactic acid. Okay, Over here we see a labeled figure. Again, we'll look at it here on the right side. These are non-lactose fermenting colonies. That means these bacteria over here on the right side of this McConkie agar, these do not possess the ability to ferment lactose into lactic acid. However, over here on the left side of the McConkie agar, these are lactose fermenting colonies, meaning these actually are able to ferment lactose into lactic acid. So the basis behind the McConkie agar is actually relatively simple. And this week we will also be looking at nitrate reduction and the phenylalanine deaminase test. Make sure to look at those and also we'll have a demonstration video on McConkie agar. Thank you.